Today's date is, uh, let's see what is today's, today's date is November 4th, 2015. I'm gonna have to talk fast in this video because I got a lot to say and I got an extremely small amount of time to, to say it. So I'm gonna fly right into the subject matter. Uh, this video is obviously gonna be put in my blog, UCSD and Law Library. Are they networking gang stalking? That blog has been hacked by the perpetrators. They are putting things in that I did not put in there and taking things out that I did. You can go to Google and type in Clyde Lewis Ground Zero Show, bring up his website, and then click on, once it comes up, click on the feature called Listen Now. Scroll down to where it says Listen Now SoundCloud. Click on that. Once that comes up, scroll down through his archive show list and go to the September 1st, 2015 broadcast. You'll hear me on that show uh, exposing on the national radio show that they are hacking into my blogs, uh, taking th uh, uh, and screwing around with my evidence, and even posting blogs and inserting my videos in them, trying to imply that I'm crazy. Because the show actually covered these, it, that's what the show was about, was disinformation campaigns. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is that uh, some property of mine was stolen and a, uh, some property of mine that I had left uh, on a certain uh, property, okay, was stolen by a city employee or employees. A, a huge portion of that property had about this, at least a stack this high of personal information papers. A bunch of different things. Papers of printed out evidence in reference to uh, evidence logs that I was compiling, uh, social services, uh, documentations, and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, I haven't seen it since. Now, yeah, hold on. I believe it was actually stolen to bait me to claim it so they can then give me a ticket concerning it. Okay? I didn't take the bait, so they still got it. The point being is that as a result of them being in possession of it, I can't remember the exact date that my medic my, my medic cal uh, reviews had been happening since 2012. See, in in California, when you apply for Medi-Cal, once you apply and they give it to you, they then review you about once a year. That's the way it's been going on ever since 2012. Just hear me out. And then they and then they will review you twice a year concerning your food stamps, which I only get about 16 bucks a month. Okay. Now, in October of 2015, I was reviewed for CalFresh, which are food stamps. I took care of all that. And then um, the uh, printout that they sent me, stating that they are reviewing me for CalFresh food stamps, was October uh, 10th. October 9th, October 10th. I went down there and took care of business. They sent me a renewal uh, for, uh, statement saying that they had been, that I've been approved and that um, my food stamps are now good for a year. I've been back at that post office at least three times since around October 20th, 15th, 20th. Okay, three times. I went there day before yesterday and got some a bunch of uh, at least two to three different two to three three different envelopes one uh one showing that the kale fr uh, fresh has been renewed and the other two were four di different types of forms asking me for all this different type of information because they were uh reviewing my medical now it was stating they wanted proof of income that they wanted uh proof of residency and that they uh wanted to uh prove that i was on that and that they wanted me to go to a doctor. It was dated October 10th, and it also stated that the information is due back by the 22nd. So, I t and then there was another line at the bottom of the form that said these uh, these documents need to be uh, brought back to our or brought back or mailed back to our office by this date. And then the little line where a date should have been put in it was left blank. I went down there today, took all those down there today, and dealt with them. Now, as I was dealing with them and asking them questions as I was being interviewed, the lady tried to get me to hand her all the forms before any of the box we had discussed about how, I said, well, look, I go, you guys are obviously knowing that I'm still on disability because you're still paying my Medicare premiums. 
for my disability. Two, I have been told at every single review in the past since 2012 that I don't need to bring in proof of income or I don't need to prove my residency or anything because all that they can already ascertain from what's in the computer. They don't need to prove that I'm still disabled because they're obviously know I'm still disabled or the state wouldn't be paying my Medicare premiums every month. So why are all these questions being asked? And why is there a small section on the form showing that, uh, showing that, um, uh, hold on, showing uh, that these papers need to be brought back even though the paper said that they needed to be brought back by 10-22-2015 there was still another section stating that that these papers are due back by such and such date these papers are due back by and then a blank line and then the sentence continued so she, even the caseworker tried to say, well, that's very peculiar. I'm going to go ask my, my supervisor why that is put there, why it is. So she wanted to take everything that was sent to me before I checked out any of the boxes on there, which I didn't check out yet because I wanted to make sure that everything that I've already stated can be verified on their end already. She said yes, and so when she said, why don't you give me these, I'll go show them to the supervisor and he can tell me uh, why this little section on it is blank. And I said, well, and she goes, I want to make a copy of them and then give, them the, give him the copies while it's not filled out by me. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something right now. Back in 2012, when I applied for food stamps and Medicare, hang on. I was staying at this, this little spot off of an industrial uh, center, uh, basically just an area where a bunch of businesses were, and it's, it was down in this little spot off this hill. And I decidedly decided to uh, apply for a Medi-Cal and food stamps back in June and July of 2012. When they seen that I was uh, uh, going down there and getting the applications and everything from it, all of a sudden the San Diego Police Department showed up at that hiking area and tried to tell me that somebody from the internet related to my fam, a uh, fam, uh, friend of my family's, okay, had seen my videos online and contacted them. That has been yet just uh, proved as a lie. And that was also the pronouns from the YouTube comments that three separate accounts were making okay, were printed out by me, all of them going by the same, almost the same exact identical name, but yet claiming to be different people. Hold on. So, this is about gang stalking. Just hear me out. So, I told them, I go, look, I go, so what are you guys doing here? And they go, well, we're just checking up on you because this woman contacted us. Jude Carroll, supposedly. Who's supposed to be a friend of my sister and my family. Okay. So anyways, and uh, so they came to try and see supposedly if I'm okay. They tr you wouldn't believe the bullshit excuse concerning how they said they found me. They tried to say that they found me as a result of a video they seen, ascertain the environment behind it, and then search the area. It's total complete bullshit, absolute complete bullshit, and I don't have time in this video to explain all those details. I've already made videos concerning it. Those, those, were, those were videos made back in 2012. The point being, so I thought, well, since these guys are here, I'm going to take advantage of them being here because I had found out somewhat that you need to get somebody to vouch for you concerning where you might be camping. So I asked them. They came with the San Diego Homeless Rescue Mission. A police officer did. So they went down with me to the social services to prove my residency so I wouldn't have to have a hearing. So we get down there and we go into a private room and we just and the police officer that was attached to the San Diego Homeless Rescue Mission vouched where I was camping at. So she said, well, since he's vouching for, for uh, to, to prove where you're camping at in within the San Diego County, then you don't need a hearing, and then you are now qualified. So she goes, go stand outside. Everybody go stand outside. I'll go print out uh, the fact that you're qualified, and then just bring it out, and you can sign it. So I go outside, and all these people are standing right outside the door acting crazy, which is a gang stalking method, playing out weird street skits, okay? She comes out with a piece of paper that states, as a result of you not wanting a hearing, you have been found disqualified for food stamps and Medi-Cal. And she kept trying to distract me from reading it. She just kept saying, sign it, sign it, sign it. OK. 
okay? And a running recording tape recorder was occurring as this was occurring. So when I said no, I'm not signing it until I read it, okay? So she goes, well, I go, and then I read it, and I said, well, this isn't what we just discussed in this room. So she goes, well, if you don't like what it says, I'll go back and reprint you out a better one. So then she goes back in, comes back out about five, ten minutes later, and everything that was on that one was in reference to what was agreed on in the room. Ever since then, I have not been able to trust social services. Now, I was screwed over massively by social services in Michigan. Gang stalking is directly connected to human trafficking. The only way that they can attempt to try to human traffic anybody is to keep them off of social services by using clever schemes, techniques, methods, and maneuvers, or claiming that their target has committed fraud. Okay. Now, I go down there today, and she's trying to get me to say, well, I'm going to go make a copy of all these, hand them to my supervisor so he can look at them, and then bring them back. Now, she goes and hands, she went to hand him a whole copy of everything that I got, okay, and give it to him, so she said he could review it, and then he, he's, he keeps those copies, and then the ones I fill out, okay, are not give are not the ones that are processed, but instead of blank ones are, then they could have said that I didn't fill the forms out right, or they could have filled in any blanks, and so on and so forth. You understand what I mean? In other words, I can't trust anything they say and or attempt to do. So I said, well, I'm not going to hand you these until they're filled out by me, and that's not going to be filled out until we have an understanding pertaining to each item. Proof of income bank statements, proof of residency in reference to do I have to currently prove where I'm camping at. She says no because we believe you that you're home, still homeless because you're telling us you are and so there's no need for you to prove it to us because it's already been proven in the past you're homeless. I go as far as proving my income goes. I go do I have to have a, I'm not sure if I have a current social security statement on me. She goes well you don't need one. All you got to do is fill out this form giving us permission to contact them so we can see that you're still on uh, social security even though I handed her a bank statement showing that Social Security is engaging in direct deposit, including my most recent one from October 2015. So I gave her all this documentation, we agreed on it, was this conversation recorded, and then I signed it, she went and made copies of it, and then gave me a verification receipt. Now, if I go to jail once this trial transpires from the 8-9-2015 ticket I got for illegal lodging in, in Rose Canyon, Okay, even though I caught a San Diego Park Ranger confessing wide open on video with a video camera right on his face, admitting that they came to that area as a direct result of retaliation because I sent San Diego Police Chief Zimmerman indisputable audio and video evidence of me being gang stalked and more. Okay, the public defender attached to this trial is trying to claim that I can't admit that evidence into court because she claims then it'll prove I was illegal lodging, even though the San Diego police, once they came, took video pictures of the tent and so did the park rangers with my property in it. So she's bullshitting me. And so trying to use that excuse so that evidence cannot be admitted in court so they can find me guilty of it to put me in jail. I go to jail for more than 30 days. I automatically lose social services and social security. Now, she told me today everything's fine as, as a result of everything we discussed, everything what that was confirmed, and everything's fine. So when I go through this trial process, which I already know, the whole thing was a setup. I mean, so you can go to Google and type in UCSD and Law Library are they networking gang stalking. Hundreds of videos of massive in-your-face evidence. Uh, also copied and pasted links of me being on the Clyde Lewis Ground Zero show exposing what I was putting up with concerning the gang stalking and what I was exposing on those uh, national radio shows uh, was caught after the fact and before it. In video, and the, those audio evidences are in YouTube videos published within that blog, as well as the confession of the San Diego Park Ranger, the uh, copy and paste of the link of the tweet that was sent to San Diego Police Chief Zimmerman, and me catching the San Diego prosecutors and public defenders engaging in the same exact identical verbal harassment that is the evidence that's in that video, including part of the evidence that was sent to San Diego Police Chief Zimmerman. They were caught on audio file um, on October 23, 2015, the same exact verbal, uh, identical verbal harassment has been caught in social services. And many, many, many other places. So if I get put in jail from this illegal lodging ticket that I got on 8-9-2015 in Rose Canyon, I will lose social security and social services. When I get back out, 
okay, I'll have to reapply for them. She's told me today that while I'm in, right before I get released, that a special worker will come in and reactivate my food stamps and my Medicaid. But if I'm but if I'm taking off a disability, uh, uh, well, I will be taking off a disability if it's more than 31 days. And they, I already know they know I'm on disability because I was recently reviewed also through Social Security. Now. The day uh, that lasted for months, it lasted from October of 2014 up until I think April of 2015 or May, April, May or June. I went through months of hell wondering are they going to take me out of Social Security. I finally got a letter, I finally went in there to check up on it because I was going in there two, three times a week and they finally told me that Social Security decided not to continue to review me at this time and therefore my benefits will continue. I said great, she goes, she gave me a printout of it and then she said expect her letter in the mail. I walk out of there and guess who's standing right outside the door? The San Diego Homeless Rescue Mission. And I started talking to them about, well, so what's going to happen to me if I keep getting arrested for illegal lodging? I go, I'll, she goes, well, you can get put in jail for up to six months. And I said, well, you know, I'll lose my, my Social Security benefits if that happens. And they go, yeah, if you're in jail for more than 30 days. So they already knew it. Now, Individuals that have harassed me in the past at intersections off of La Jolla Village Square Drive, okay, especially one that harassed me, I think it was on October 28, 2013, when he was harassing me on that intersection, me taking video pictures of him, he was carrying a sign, please help me, I need food, and guess what was on the back of that sign? The San Diego Homeless Rescue Mission. These are nothing but schemes played out in order to to arrest and or ticket a target for illegal lodging, use the courts to put the target in jail for it. As a result, the loss of benefits occur when the target's released. Other things happen while the target's trying to recover what was lost as a result of being in the jail. In other words, they're going to continue the expedition and probably arrest me again or give me a legal lodging ticket before I can get Social Security back. Okay, that's not including the fines I might have to pay for this illegal lodging ticket. So the goal is to go after the future benefits and then try and take away the money I got on me currently through the fines. Because you can human traffic in, you can really attempt to human traffic an individual and or steer them to places where they can be exploited in other ways, like illegal syndicated probate control, if the target doesn't have anything. No money, no uh, uh, current income coming in, okay? And while they're continually being targeted at where they're sleeping, where they're camping. Go to Google and type in organized stalking and or gang stalking and cell phone tracking. They're tracking my cell phones, my electronics, and through covert physical surveillance and then propping up staged events in order to make it appear that the police and or other types of law enforcement have a normal appearing reason to know where I'm at so they can give me these tickets for legal lodging and to arrest me to tie me up in court to bring about the effects of loss of benefits. And this is exactly what's happening. So go to that blog because you wouldn't believe the massive evidence that's in it. And the evidence that's in it is indisputable. So let's see if I get put in jail. And then let's see if I get any letters from social services before this trial ends and I get put in jail. Or if any letters magically reappear uh, in the post office box that's dedicated to me once I'm put in jail. Them claiming that. I brought that stuff in that I brought in today too late. Is that why that little blank wasn't filled out pertaining to this documentation is due by this date? She also told me today that the reason why I didn't get it in my post office box until today's date, and I mean until two days ago, was because even though it gets printed out, they still have a bunch of backlog going on. She openly admitted and said that it was that it was probably just not sent out. So it's nothing but complete bullshit because the the notice date on the form is the almost it's either the same day or the day before that the food stamp review came and I got those out of my box and would have been in my post office box four times. So why wasn't it put in my mailbox until November second? Go to Google and type in mail theft, the mail delayment, and gang stalking. Remember, the same exact identical verbal harassment has been caught in the San Diego courthouse. It's been caught by the San Diego prosecutors and public defenders that has been caught at social services. So go to that blog and dissect it and you will see I'm telling you the truth. These are schemes in order to bring about and exploit the effects of what happens to you as a result of being tracked to your camping area. To give you legal lodging tickets, to use the courts to put you in jail that bring about the effects causing you to lose your benefits. 
and as a result, they monopolize on all the circumstances from the loss of benefits. No money to feed yourself, no money to get around transportation-wise, and then the expedition continues after you're out of jail. And the expedition will also continue towards you in jail. So go to Google and type in detention centers and gang stalking, prisons and gang stalking, county jails and gang stalking, uh, uh, prison and or detention center, um, uh, police officers and gang stalking. Like they can stage assault, stage provocations, so they can charge you for other crimes and keep you in there, including felonies, so you'll never be eligible for social security when you get out. And I got school loan debt. Debt bondage for human trafficking. I'm in San Diego, California, and I'm predicting it all right now. I gotta go home in San Diego, California. Let's see if I can use this phone to show you the date pertaining to these predictions, even though this video will be uploaded tomorrow. And let's see if they erase it before it can be uploaded. Uh, because I gotta take the memory card out of the video camera to put it in the computer at the law library. Where I'm being gang stalked on a feverish scale. That's why the law library is mentioned in the title of my blog. UCSD and Law Library are they networking gang stalking? Okay, so you can see this is November 2015, and the date is right there. It's uh, it's Wednesday the fourth. Okay, you can see that because when when it falls on the day, it highlights it. You can see one, two, three, four. I went down there today, and I got a copy of everything as well as the receipt. But if they put me in jail, they can erase the, uh, if, if, it, if the conversation was recorded, they can erase that audio file, and they can steal the receipt they gave me. And even the copy of everything that was given to them. They can steal it all. So, fellow American citizens, go to Google and type in social services and gang stalking. The police and gang stalking. Okay? And you'll see I'm telling you the truth. I gotta go. I'm in San Diego, California. This is a video prediction. Thank you.